Welcome to the UGC lecture series. This is the EPG Patashala lecture series on computer science and we are talking about the paper data structures. In this particular module, we will be talking about another algorithm to find the minimum spanning tree. In the last module, we had already discussed what is spanning tree, what is a minimum spanning tree which we will again recap in this module also and we have looked at one algorithm which is the Kruskal's algorithm for finding the minimum spanning tree. So, we are again going to find the minimum spanning tree, but using another algorithm called the Prim's algorithm. Okay. So, these are the people responsible for the development of this particular module and uh, the learning objectives of these mo this module are to find in uh, to understand in detail the Prim's algorithm to find minimum spanning trees and to understand the algorithm through a walkthrough example. And the terms associated with this module are graphs because basically we are finding the minimum spanning tree of a graph, what is a spanning tree and the minimum spanning tree and the Prim's algorithm. Okay. So, before we go further, let us just do a recap of what is spanning trees. So, when you have a graph that is connected, when we visit all the nodes of the graph, it is called a traversal. Okay. So, we have a depth first traversal and a breadth first uh, traversal where you start at any vertex and we will cover all the vertices of the graph that is a general traversal. Now, a spanning tree on the other hand is a tree, it is not a graph, the output of the, uh, we are taking a graph and producing a spanning tree as an output. So, it is any tree that consists only of the edges in G, so it, will, it is consisting only of the edges in tree and it has to include all the vertices that are there in the graph. So, it consists of all the edges in G, the graph G and includes all the vertices, but there is no cycle that is the issue we will come to that. And uh, also that is a spanning tree. So, an edge of uh, G that is a graph is the nothing but the edges of the tree um, and the non-tree uh, edges. So, plus the non-tree edges, the non-tree edges will not form part of the spanning tree, only the tree edges. So, how do you find the tree edges? We will go into that. So, T is a set of edges using, used during search, during search of the tree and N is the remaining edges which we do not include for whatever reason. So, basically we do not include uh, uh, edges because it is not among the minimum or that if you include that edge it forms a cycle. So, the minimum spanning tree for a given graph is a spanning tree of minimum cost for that graph. So, basically we are converting from a graph which may have cycles to a tree which do not have cycles. So, that cycle is an important part of the um, differentiation between the graph and the tree. Now, let us go to the Prim's algorithm. So, it was initially discovered in 1930 by Wojtek Jarnik and but it was later rediscovered in 1957 independently by Robert C. Prim. So, Prim is the name that is given to the algorithm called the Prim's algorithm. Now, while the previous algorithm that we discussed, the Kruskal's algorithm, starts with uh, uh, is is uh, designed with edges, or you know, and, uh, I mean, you build the graph by selecting edges. In Prim's, we start off by picking any node within the graph, and we can grow from there. Okay, so it can start with any node. Now, remember, in the Kruskal's algorithm, we started with a minimum edge. Here, we start with any node. Now, you label the starting node A with a zero and all others with infinity. Now, starting from A, update all the connected nodes labels to A with their weighted edges if it is less than the already labeled value. Now, you find the next smallest value and update the corresponding connecting nodes, repeat until all the nodes have been visited. I will just repeat this once more. You start with a node okay, and you label it with a 0 and all others with infinity. So, you have not traveled there. So, it is infinite. Now, from A, you uh, update the label of all the nodes connected to A with their weighted edges. Okay. If the label value is less than, uh, if the weight is less than the label value, if the weight is more than the label value, we do not know. So, the approach to the whole way of building the minimum spanning tree itself is different. So, after you do this, now you have to select the next label. The next label will do the next smallest uh, label and you, uh, you select that and update the corresponding connected nodes with the label value. So, you will update it only if the label, I mean the weight is less than the already existing label value. So, you repeat until all the nodes have been visited. That is the same in the previous algorithm also. Now, what is the step of the uh, steps of the Prim's algorithm? The new graph is constructed with one node from the old graph, any node. So, you just uh, set the new graph is or the tree is constructed 
with a node from the old graph. While new graph has fewer than n nodes, so you have to account for all the nodes. Find the node from the old one with the smallest connecting edge to the new graph and add it to the new graph, new graph or tree. Every step you would have joined one node. So, at the end of you that is every step of the algorithm one additional node comes into the tree and all the nodes it will have the minimum uh, uh, and the graph with the nodes is will, will be a minimum spanning tree of the original graph. So, this is quite similar to the Kruskal because what we want to do is to find the minimum spanning tree. However, there is one major difference the tree that you are always uh, the, the tree that you are growing will always stay connected, but in Kruskal you could add an edge to your growing tree that was not connected to the rest of it. Here you cannot do that you will add only when there is a connection in Kruskal's algorithm it depends on the minimum edge. So, you can have two disconnected um, edges forming two different two trees and you could connect the two trees. So, initially you start with all different remember. So, here you had an add an edge that was not connect to the rest of it, but you cannot do that here. So, here is the algorithm you start with a set which is empty then pick any vertex from the graph add the minimum edge incident to that vertex to the yes to the set you continue to add edges into yes n my n minus 2 more times using the following root add the minimum edge way to s that is incident to s but does not form a cycle when added to s. So, this is similar to what we did, but the whole data structure is different. So, here we have the Prim's algorithm you select any vertex a. So, let us assume we select a select the shortage edge connected to a. So, that is a b. So, you have 3. Now, you have to start from either a or b and select the um, the uh, so, a b is selected. Now, you have to start from either a or b. Now, b has 5 and 8 while a has 4 and 7. So, 4 is the one with the uh, select the shortest edge connected to any vertex already connected. So, here, here we have a and b already connected. So, you have to select the shortest edge connected to any of the vertex. So, to b you have 5 and 8 for a you have 4 and 7. So, you have to select a. So, a is selected. Okay. Now, you have B A E. Now, you have to check to uh, B you have uh, 5 and 8 connected to A you have 7 connected which is already not and to E you have 5 and 2. So, which should you select? You should select E D. So, that is the one that will be next selected. So, now you have selected E D. Now, you have A, B, E and D selected. Now, you have to select the edge that connected to the any vertex already connected. You have to select it. So, you have uh, to B you have 5 and 8, to A you have 7, to E you have a, only 5, the others are already, I mean the other edge you have already considered, to D you have uh, 4, 6 and 8. So, obviously, which is the one you will select? You will select C, D. So, that is the one you will select or D, C. So, since uh, we are having D already, so D, C is connected. Okay. Now, you have from C you have 6 connecting F from U E you have 5, from D you have 8, from A you have 7 and from B you have 8. So, obviously, you have to select E 5 because that is the shortest. Okay. So, this is the one. Now, all the nodes have been uh, done. So, you have A B 3, A E 4, E D 2, D C 4 and E F 5 and the total weight is 80. So, this are the nodes that you select and this is the way it is done. It is completely different from the previous one where there we consider only the edges which are whose weights we consider and we add. Here what and it may not be connected. So, that is the difference here we always start from nodes already present in the tree and try to connect a node to that one the nodes in the uh, tree uh, based on the minimum value. So, that is the way the Prim's algorithm works. Okay. Now, let us go for a walk through. Okay. So, first we have an initial array uh, which contains all the nodes all the A, B, C, D 8 nodes and uh, we have uh, K that is it is not it being selected and we keep the label to be infinity and we have P, V. I will explain that. So, this is the initialization of the array that we are going to use for this particular algorithm. Now, you can select any node. So, let us assume we start with D. Okay. You would have selected any node algorithm. Let us assume we start with D. 
Now, what happens start with any node? So, we here we start with D. So, now k becomes true that means, you have, you, have, you have visited the node and initially we label that initial node as 0 that is the distance is 0 and that is it. So, we have not used any edge. Now, what you have to do? You have to select now from D you have 4 edges C, um, F uh, and uh, B and uh, E and out of this uh, C has the I mean D C has the minimum edge. So, that is what we have to select. So, uh, we take all the edges. So, from D you have uh, you know, the P V gives you the edge from where it uh, I mean you are looking at the thing. So, D C 3, D E 25, D F 18 and D G 2. So, obviously, you have to select G because that has the minimum weight. So, now you are going to select a node that connects to D already existing the tree with this particular uh, edge. So, I have to select that. Okay. So, that is selected. So, D uh, uh, select the node with the minimum distance. Now, comes the updation. Okay. You select the node with the minimum distance that is over. So, that is what is true. You have not visited the other nodes. Now, next update distances of adjacent unselected nodes. Okay. Now, to D and G, what are the nodes? Now, to G you have um, you have two nodes H and E connected. So, to D you have um, H, H which is 3 and to D uh, to H you have 3 G and to E you have 7 G. Now, look at this in the previous uh, it was E was connected to do D with 25. So, the minimum at that point of time the minimum spanning tree had only D. So, the label of E was 25, okay. but now what happens E has been modified because from D and G if you want to go to E you could have you will choose E G and not D G because E G is less weight. So, that is why we say we change the label depending upon uh, if it is lesser than what was previously available then we will update. So, that updation is what is happening here you will see that the updation this E has changed to 7. Nothing else has changed because uh, G is connected to D, E and H. H is a new thing, you new node which is not previously connected to D. So, that remains as it is, but G is connected to E, D is also connected to E. D and E the label was 25, but now it becomes 7 because this is lesser than 25. So, that is what you have. So, that is how we do the updation of the distance completely different from how we did it in Kruskal. So, uh, for unselected nodes alone, so that is what we did. Remember the selected nodes have T there. Okay. Now, you have D G. Now, you have to look at which is the lowest. So, you have uh, you could have you can select either 3 D uh, I mean 3 C C as the node or you can select H as the node both have 3. So, what do we select? Let us assume we select the C that is D C. How do you know where to go? This part you have said what is the source. So, D C is what we have selected and its label is 3. Okay. So, we have selected the node. So, now what has happened? For the minimum spanning tree D G consisting of 2 nodes D G and the edge 2, we have select we have updated all the distances and we have selected which node to come in less the next and the node that comes in next is C. You could have also so chosen H, we have chosen C here. Okay. So, now the minimum spanning tree consists of 3 nodes C, D and G. Now, one job we have to do is we have to add the nodes which connects to C. Okay. So, there are two things you uh, C connects to some nodes which is not already there or it connects to nodes that are there then you we have to check whether you have to select uh, change the label. Now, if you see C, C is connected to B it was uh, the previous uh, uh, spanning tree D G was not connected to B. So, B will have um, the label as 4 and connected to C that is fine. C is connected to F. Now, F already has 18 there because of the connection to D. Now, that has to be updated to 3. So, that is one change. Then C is uh, that is it. So, C is connected to 3 things. One is a new one and one has to be updated. Uh, uh, so, that is what we have. Okay. So, so, B 4 C 
and look at f, f previously had the value of 18, now it has been updated to 3. Okay. Now, we have the nodes b, e, f and h, now we have to check which is the minimum. So, here the minimum is again it could be f or h, whichever one you want to select it can be selected. So, we have to select the node with the minimum. So, uh, we have to select that. Let us assume that we select f. So, f is selected over that process over. Now, we have uh, d, g, c and f connect, collected in that order. How we know the edges? We have um, d, e, uh, then d, c and c, f. Okay. Now, we have to update, right? we have to update from f. Now, f is connected to how many nodes? Uh, f is connected to E, F is connected to C, F is connected to B and F is connected to A. Now, now some of these are new nodes. For example, A is a new node, E is a new node, uh, you know uh, E is already there. I mean it is not yet uh, considered in the minimum spanning tree, but it, there is a connection there. We will have to update this only if the um, label value is lesser than what is already existing. So, we have selected F, the next step is to update. So, let us see. Now, from f to a there is no uh, problem, we just add it because that is a new node which is not, uh, not yet been uh, tra tran uh, which is not yet traversable from any other node. So, you have that 10 f. Now, what else is changing? Um, C does not come into the picture. f e okay, uh, changes because previously e value was 7 when it is going from g, but now it is going from f with 2. So, you have to update. Now, look at the other one b, b has 4 from c as 7 from f. So, that you do not have to consider. So, the two changes you do is you add a, a which is not yet been considered and you update the value of the distance for e. So, now the not only the distance changes, but which node you are going to traverse from also changes. Before it was c, now it would be um, f. Okay. So, that is over. Now, again you have updated. Now, what we have to do is we have to select the minimum. So, you select the node with the minimum distance. So, the node with the minimum distance now is that E um, that is the E with 2. So, you select that. So, that is what we have seen here. Now, what happens? E is a new node. Okay. Now, you have to update with E. The only new node that comes into the picture um, is because g is already considered to e and d is considered to e uh, is b. So, b 10, but b is already only 4. So, update distances, the table entries remain unchanged because of the fact that uh, the b that you have has 10, already it is only 4. So, we do not have to consider g, d and all already been included uh, and uh, e is not connected to any other node except these nodes. So, there is no table entries are not changed. Now, you have to again select a node with the minimum weight. So, A, B and H are the only nodes of which H has the least. So, from G you have to select H. So, that is what is selected. From G you select H. Now, H has to A uh, a distance of 4 while here we have 10. So, now what happens? The D B becomes uh, 4 and uh, the from where you have gone comes becomes H and not F. And um, so that is what will happen. Mm, so that becomes 4. Now, the minimum uh, you have uh, both are 4, okay. we will see that the updation. Okay. So, the update distance is there. Now, you have a and b, one uh, going from h to a and one going from c to b. Any of this could have been selected, does not matter because both have the same distance. So, that is what we do. So, first a is selected, so that is over. Uh, now, the node that is left behind is B. So, select node with minimum distance. So, here again the table remains unchanged. Why? Because uh, from uh, A to B is 8 is more than 4. From H to um, B is 9 which is more than 4. So, the only way that you want to come to H uh, B is through C. I will repeat again. So, this is the updation distances. I am updating the distance of adjacent unselected nodes. There is no change because the only node that you have to update uh, unselected node here is B. And from uh, the uh, node uh, that you have selected now A, it is 9, I mean sorry, it is 8. 
but already what exists the distance is 4 that is lesser. So, you do not have to change the label nor the where you want to travel it from. So, the final uh, selection would be this where you select the edge B C. So, what are the edges you have? You have the edges ok, you, uh, you start with D then you have uh, uh, D from D you have G and then um, that is the next one from G you have H then uh, from uh, G you have H from H you have A from A you do not have anything, but from C you also have B from D you also have C and so on. So, the edges are H A C B D C F E C F D G and G H. So, this is the spanning tree no cycles are formed and the final uh, spanning tree and the cost of the minimum spanning tree is just adding the distances. So, 4 plus 4 8 plus 3 11 plus 2 is 13 uh, plus uh, 3 16 17 18 19 20 21. So, that is it. So, the, the minimum spanning tree cost will always remain, but the order in which the edges are taken is different. So, this is and sometimes if there are uh, edges with same cost it will have a, it could choose another edge also. So, this is the minimum spanning tree you can see from the graph to the tree the main difference is there are no cycles ok. So, what you have done here is you have traversed the tree I am sorry traversed the graph and you have chosen the minimum uh, edges for traversal and you are uh, in the spanning tree definition you cannot have cycles and the minimum spanning say, uh, tree says that you have to choose the edges with the minimum. So, when you when you the final value of the minimum spanning tree should be the minimum value ok. So, how do we analyze the Prim's algorithm? So, the running time is of the order of m plus n log n where m is the number of edges of the original graph and n is the number of nodes. Now, you could use a heap we have already seen what is a heap you could use a heap heap is uh, for finding out the um, edges in the um, with the least values. So, the runtime will be of the order of n squared instead of m n log n. Uh, however, using a heap complicates the code since you have you will use a complicated data structure a Fibonacci heap is the best kind of heap to use, but again it complicates the code. So, it is much more complicated to do, but then if you want uh, if the number of edges and nodes are very high it is worth going for that. Unlike Kruskal it does not need to see all the graph at once this is one of the major advantage it can deal with one piece at a time. The idea is if you have a large graph what do you look at in the Prim's algorithm you have selected a node you look at all the edges connecting that node ok and it does not need to worry if adding an edge will create a cycle since this algorithm deals primarily, primarily with nodes and not edges. For this algorithm the number of needs uh, nodes needs to be kept in uh, minimum in addition to the number of edges. For small graphs the edge matter more while for large graphs the number of nodes matters more. So, here again we will just discuss uh, the difference between Kruskal's and Prim's algorithm is basically two one is unlike Kruskal, Krus Kruskal you want to see the whole uh, graph all at once all the edges you should have a picture only then you can do it uh, because you always select the minimum edge first and then you have to uh, that is it here what it does it will only be bothered about the node which is there in the tree. So, those two nodes and the corresponding um, adjacent nodes of those nodes are what you want to see. So, you do not have to see the graph all at once. The second issue is it do, you do not have to worry about cycle issue at all because here we are not adding an edge we are adding a node ok, but essentially the node and the edge connected to it, but still you do not have to bother about cycles. And for this algorithm to work be, uh, better in the previous Kruskal's algorithm we said it works better when we have a number of edges is minimum here the number of nodes also has to be kept to a minimum. For small graphs it is the edges that matter for larger graph it is the number of nodes that matter ok. And uh, when you compare the two algorithms both the algorithms will give solutions with the same length minimum is not going to change minimum length or the minimum value of that length or uh, as you say weight does not matter and uh, it can select the edges in a different order that is possible ok, but still that that is again only possible if the number of the edges and all that have same weight and the selection is like that. Uh, 
this that is what occasionally they will use different edges also order may be different it may even use different edges. This may happen when you have to choose between edges with the same length. So, if you same uh, weight or le length. So, if you if you have two choices you can choose either one. Uh, uh, if there is uh, two choices it means that more than one um, minimum uh, spanning tree is available. So, this is what we are talking about. Uh, so, basically the Prim's algorithm uh, seems to be um, better option because of the fact that we do not have to see the whole graph at once especially when we are talking about applications with large graphs uh, and uh, you want uh, you do not want it to be uh, occupying the I mean you cannot afford it to be present in the main memory all at once. So, those issues are there. So, because of that uh, we do not um, uh, we, we can use Prim's algorithm and there is no point there is no need to um, find out whether it is a cycle because when you want to find out whether it is a cycle again you need the whole graph and you have to keep on checking with if I add this edge will it form a cycle if I add this edge will it form a cycle. So, that is not a straightforward um, way of finding out as we as we already discussed it has to be have a uni, uni, unionizable data structures which is not a straightforward way here also it will be more better if you use a heap, but heap is a data structure that is possible to use with an array itself. So, in this uh, uh, module we have explained the Prim's algorithm with the simulation to find the minimum spanning tree. We have explained the we have tried to bring out the difference between Prim's algorithm and Kruskal's algorithm. Both are um, both algorithms give you the uh, same uh, minimum weight um, both are are trying to find the minimum spanning tree, but the approaches are completely different one starts uh, uses edges and one uses nodes one needs uh, to see the whole graph at once while prims does not need to in kruskal you have to find uh, you have to find whether a cycle is formed when you add an edge here that does not arise because you are not adding an edge you are adding a node we also explain the prims algorithm we can walk through example so that the technique of minimum span spanning is understood thank you